I'm joined now by Forbes tech reporter Emily Baker White, one of the reporters surveilled by TikTok, and NBC News youth and internet culture reporter Callan Rosenblatt. Emily, let me start with you uh, on this breaking news earlier today about the Department of Justice. TikTok, uh, ByteDance in some ways already admitted to doing this. So what does this investigation, what should we expect this investigation to lead? Well, we don't know, and it depends what they find. So what we know is that the Department of Justice sent a subpoena to ByteDance uh, about information that the company might have that has to do with their surveillance of journalists. And we know that the FBI has been conducting interviews as well. What we know about the surveillance is that they were trying to catch people inside the company who were talking to me, who were leaking. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty classic function inside a lot of companies. A lot of companies try right. to catch people who leak. But in, the, in, in their attempts to do that, they monitored my location and my location data was pulled by a team that sits partially in China. And so my US citizen user data was accessed by a team in China, which is something that the TikTok and ByteDance have been desperately trying to tell the US government would not happen. And that sort of any access to US user data mm -hmm. from China or other places outside the country are strictly controlled and only ever used for legitimate business purposes. And in this case, that that access control system kind of broke down a little bit. Emily, I, I you and I, I, we've talked about, I know you've talked about this before, but did you, did you know you were being surveilled or was this, or did the government tell you this happened? No, I found out that I was being surveilled last October. Mm -hmm. um, I have the TikTok app off my phone. So if they were trying to pull my location data from the TikTok app, they lost that ability a long time ago. Um, and my understanding is that the federal government opened an investigation after ByteDance and TikTok mm -hmm. admitted, after conducting their own internal investigations, that this had happened. Um, if, I, I, again, I go back to, they're opening an investigation, so then what? Again, I go back to ByteDance admitted to this because they're trying, and I think that TikTok was trying to use this as a way of saying a show of goodwill. Hey, see, we, we know we messed up. And we, you know, the fact that we're coming forward, see, you can trust us. Yeah, I think that's, that's right so far. And if the Department of Justice finds some other use of that data, um, I'm very curious to hear about it, but I don't know about it. Um, Callan, let me move over to you because we were having this debate this morning uh, among TikTok users and non-TikTok users. And the question is, would a ban on TikTok be an annoyance or would it have serious repercussions um, politically and maybe culturally with young people in America? Yeah, I, Chuck, I think that if TikTok goes away, you're going to see a huge hole in the social media diet and sort of the connection of, of young people. Now, I, I do want to, like, hen, hedge my bets a little on, like, mm -hmm. if this will have a huge political ramification. But I did some of the reporting in 2020 when Trump suggested this ban. And I know that a lot of young people told me this was sort of their political awakening. This mm -hmm. was the first time they felt politics affected them in their day-to-day -day life. And I know a lot of young people are really frustrated. They're asking, you know, why are you uh, hammering down on TikTok when a lot of domestic apps also sort of track our data or have mm -hmm. all of our data? You know, they're a little frustrated in that. And also they say to me, you know, why are why is our government focusing on this when there's climate change, there's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, g gun control? Right. Obviously, we can walk and chew gum at the same time, but, you know, that's their concern. And so so I think this will motivate some young people to get politically engaged. But to what degree, I really want to hesitate to say, like, how much. Yeah. But yes, this will have an absolute cultural impact as well. Yeah, I mean, my informal survey of a couple of teenagers was <laughs> simply, well, I guess, you know, if the stuff I like moves over to YouTube shorts or moves over to Instagram reels, I guess I'll go look at it. But I, they did say the reason my kids said the reason they don't really follow it is because it's only stuff that's reposted from TikTok already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, I, the, thing, the thing I hear all the time is if you see something on Instagram or on YouTube, you're late. Like, you've already missed the window of it being <laughs> right. popular. Right. So, you know, these apps will, of course, fill the void. They will, you know, take up that space. We saw the same thing happen when Vine died, when mm -hmm. uh, Twitter 
bought Vine and then that was shuttered. We then saw, you know, something like TikTok move right. in. And w whether it's one of these existing companies right. or a new company, something will move in to take in that space. However, people are already frustrated. They say, we love this thing. We don't want it to go away. Yeah. Some people are, say it's fine if it, you know, is acquired by a U.S. company, but that remains to be seen. And the creator economy, are they already hedging their bets? Are you already seeing evidence of them preparing to move to a new platform? Well, Chuck, people started preparing back in 2020 when Trump first announced this mm -hmm. ban. You know, they started saying, you need to diversify. You need to be on YouTube. You need to be on Instagram. Maybe start a music career. Maybe start acting yeah. or modeling. Because when you are on a social media app, you're renting space. You never own it. It could go away at any time. Right. And so, yes, uh, social media experts, people in the creator economy are saying, make sure that you diversify. But they're not quite ready to be panicked just yet. It didn't pan out last time. It's They're not sure if it'll pan out this yeah. time. And they also, you know, they've been they've been uh, investing in these other uh, platforms as well. So they feel pretty prepared and they also don't think this is going to go away overnight. So they're not too freaked out just yet, but they are kind of like sort of hedging their yeah. bets. Emily, what would it take for you to put TikTok back on your phone? I have a confession, which is that I hate autoplay videos. I just, I hate them on YouTube. I hate them on Instagram. I think they, they make noise at me, like without my express consent. And so that's really why TikTok's not going back on my phone. Fair enough. <laughs> I but, mean, but, not my medium. Well, I would say this. Look, you, you have firsthand experience with the potential of what ByteDance could do here. Has that given you extra pause? And what would you advise? Uh, what would you advise somebody uh, who had TikTok on their phone? I don't think that there was a there was an obvious reason that ByteDance and TikTok wanted to mm -hmm. know where I was. I think there is not an obvious reason for ByteDance or TikTok to want to know where you know my friends are necessarily. Right. And so I, I don't think because I was surveilled, obviously random Americans will be surveilled. If, you know, I think um, this was a really bad move by the company yep. and they would tell you this. Um, I, I hesitate to say it necessarily means this is happening right. elsewhere across the company. I think the fear is less that they know which cafes and restaurants I like to go to right. and more that if user data is not tightly enough controlled, right. people who, you know, Chinese dissidents living in the United States or military operatives or et cetera, if their data could be accessed the same way mine was, yeah. that's like much scarier. But I also don't think the fact that this happened once with my data is an indication that it's sort of part of some massive scheme of mass data collection. But maybe that's happening, but we don't have to suggest it. Right. Emily Baker White of Forbes, uh, Callan Rosenblatt, uh, my colleague here at NBC News on the Internet and Cultural Beat. Thank you both for getting us started. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.